here we have a, let's call it an intermediate to do app. Uh, it's a full stack application. Uh, we are signed in. See, we've got our little avatar over here. We've got a sign out button. Uh, and we've got a to do application. So if I create a new to do and I hit submit, you can see we get a little spinner. Our uh, input disables itself. Um, we're taking a minute, of course, because we're doing screen recording. We get a toast notification here to do added successfully. And we get our new to do that pops up. If I hit mark complete, you can see we also get the spinner icon. We're going to have to disable that button. That's a fix we need to do. We get another toast notification task updated. Uh, here's our to do now crossed out. And we can also delete a to do. We get the same kind of thing going. Um, that button spinner. And there we go. It's all gone. What do you typically do in something like this in a full stack application? Well, let's go look. So right now I've got this page and I've got a to do's uh, component here and a make to do. So make to do is this whole thing with this just the input and the submit button. And then the to do's component is what displays our lists of to do cards. I've got this bad to do's over here that I have commented out. This is probably what you're typically going to be utilizing you know, when you're just getting started in React. Uh, of how to set something like this up, right? So if you want a component that fetches its own data, I'm in Next.js 13 here, so you can see we've got a use client directive at the top. So we have our ability to access our use hooks uh, in React. We've got this interface just to say what this to do is gonna be made of. Once we get it back from the Axios call, we're gonna look at in a second, but we've got a bunch of states here. We've got a state that we're gonna use to put our to do's in that we're gonna render out on the screen. We've got a state here for loading. We've got a state here for error. So I already got a bunch of things going on in this one component and you've got this use effect call, right? So use effect runs as soon as this component mounts. And basically it's just react's way of saying, as soon as this thing, as soon as this component loads, we're going to run these functions that are in this use effect call. And you can see here, we have to set loading to true so that we can have access to a, a loading state that says we're loading tasks here. So when we're loading those tasks, it's going to show up there. And then we've got our try catch here in case something goes wrong, we can catch some errors and set an error state that we're also handling with a use state. Uh, here you can see we've got our axios.get and we're fetching some to-dos. So we take our data out of that. Uh, we're going to just say this is data.todos as to-do array, hence our interface up here. And then we set that to-dos in state. Woof. And then by the end of that, we've got our div here where we're mapping through our to do's in state and returning it to do card for every single one and spreading our to do um, attributes in that as props. So that's not terrible, right? And is our standard pattern in React. But what happens when I add this to do, right? How do you trigger this component that fetches the data for your to do's? How do you trigger that refetch? Well, one solution that you may come up with, which is kind of a hacky way to do some of this stuff, is you know that in our use effect, if you've been using use effect for any amount of time, you've got here what's called a dependency. So basically, if you have it, if you have, let's say another state or something that changes along the way here, if you add that to your dependency, React's going to know to rerun that use effect, whatever functions you have in there. So in our case, it's going to make that call again. If we go back and we look at our page and where this stuff's being rendered out, Again, I'm in Next.js 13. So right now, this is technically a uh, server component. I can make this a client component by adding use client on the top, and then I have access to my use hooks uh, in React. And I could put some sort of state up here, I guess, right? This is what we call raising the state or elevating the state to a parent component. And this is where you put in, like, um, let's say we kind of... Uh, we're going to make this a little bit of a hacky thing and we're going to say like const rerun and then set rerun and this is going to be equal to use state and we're going to say this is false right now just to have a flag that we can switch on and off that says something updated now we need to rerun this this use effect call and bad to do's that we have over here so we would pass in our set rerun as a prop down to make to do. And then when we go into make to do, whenever we submit, we'd have to also pass in <laughs> the state and we'd have to just flip that state as part of a make to do call. Whenever we hit the submit button, now we're also, aside from doing our standard logic of sending data to our, our backend and making some changes in the database and an API there, 
we'd also have to flip this from false to true or whatever, current state to opposite state. And you'd pass that rerun into your bad to-dos. So let's say we'd have our props here of like, set rerun is this, set rerun, and then rerun is this. And already you can see we're getting messy here. I'm not going into make to-do specifically right now because there's other stuff we haven't talked about yet we're gonna get into, but you can see we're passing these props in here and it's just messy. Um, and it's, it's gonna cause a lot of extra stuff. And this is again, kind of hacky, right? But then if we go back into bad to-dos, let's say we pass rerun here, rerun, and then we know if we go into bad to-dos, we could put rerun here when we take it in as part of our props, which we don't have any props here right now. And when rerun changes from true to false, this use effect's gonna run again, but it is so just weird, right? And this only solves one part of the problem. What happens with this mark complete button and this delete button right now those things are located within this card component right this to do card that we're mapping out here when i click mark complete and we switch that uh complete flag from a true to a false or false to true how do we tell this component here to go do go back and rerun that fetch are we going to do another hacky thing like that where we have another state we pass around here do i need to elevate the state or raise a state from to do card and move those functions into this component. It's such a mess, right? And we have different components handling different parts of state that are just not great. So that's where our library called TanStack Query comes into play. TanStack Query used to be called React Query. So if you're familiar with, familiar with hearing that name, that's what we're gonna be talking about. So let's go and let's keep bad to do's open and let's open the actual to do's that we're working with here. So we can see a different way that we're handling some of this stuff. So again, right now, all we're going to all we're going to talk about is how that component, which will have a list of to do cards, is fetching that data. Well, we're starting off with this interface on both sides, which you can see here, just to kind of label uh, what we're using TypeScript, so we can indicate what we're returning back and what that object's going to look like. And then we have this nice little concise bit of code right here. So we're not setting any state. If you can see up top on our imports, we're not even importing use state. We're not importing use effect. So we're not doing any of that. Instead, we've got this use query uh, hook that, or you, we'll call it a hook, right? We've got this use query hook that we are importing from TanStack React Query. And we're destructuring some elements from use query. Um, so when we've got this, we pass in an object we pass in a query key. We'll talk about that more in a minute, which we're labeling here as user to do's. You can see in this array, we have one string in there. And then we have our query function, which here we have an async function where we're calling axios.get to our API endpoint. I'll move this out of the way. And then we're returning our data.to do's the same way we were doing it over here in our bad component. And that's it. We're not setting loading state, we're not setting an error state. Instead, we are able to destructure from use query a loading state and an error state that we will use if we're loading, we display loading task, right? So we get to use it in the same exact way, but we don't have to manage it directly. And then once our data is loaded, then we can map through and display our to-do cards. So that's one piece of the puzzle, right? Of just saying, how are we going to manage fetching the data? Great. But we also just talked about refetching that data. And that's where this query key comes into play. So another thing that TanStack does for us is it provides what's called a caching layer. So basically when it pulls down this data, we're telling TanStack to store that data in a caching layer that we are labeling as user to do's. And then through context, because TanStack utilizes context to pass data throughout the entire application, we can kind of call that user to do's caching layer anywhere and we can tell it that maybe that data is no longer valid and we should rerun that fetch so let's look at this make to do component and right, i'm going to close this one for now let's get a good big screen going on here so you can see in make to do all this really has is this input and this button the submit button and here now we have this thing called use mutation and use query client that we're importing from TanStack React Query. We've got some other stuff here. I've got my input and my button from Shad CN UI. 
and uh, we are using use state for one specific thing, really just for that input. And we've got a toast here, which is another Shad CN thing in Axios. So I've got a session here, which is just from uh, auth.js, next auth. Um, and we have our set state and to do just to track our input, which is standard. And then here we've got our mutate function, right? So use mutation. So this is what we're going to be utilized when we're saying we're going to send data to our backend to be placed into our database. And that's a function that we're just going to call to do something, right? So rather than setting all those different states and managing all that stuff ourselves, we again get to a, a destructure, a mutate function, which we're going to call submit in this case, and a loading state. And here's our mutation function, where as an asynchronous function, we're doing axios.post to send some data to our backend, and our backend does whatever it does with it. We'll receive a response from our backend, whether that's a success message from Axios or with an Axios or a fetch if you're using that, right? Um, a 200 status success or a different status that indicates an error message. So on success, what do we want to happen? We're going to trigger that toast notification. So that's going to pop up for us to say that our to-do was added successfully. We're going to set to-do back to a blank string, just so we blank out that input. Uh, and then we call this query client dot invalidate queries, which what this does for us is this tells Tanstack, hey, that stuff that we just stored in user to do's, that data that we previously fetched and stored in that thing we called user to do's, that's no longer valid. Wherever we're getting that data, go fetch it again and place new data back in that user to do's state that we're, that we're calling here. So as soon as our backend database has processed our request and we get a successful response, we have a success state and we tell that component without sharing any or elevating any state to refetch that data. If we have an error, we can also say, what do we do on an error? We have a toast notification. If something went wrong, please try again. So way cleaner way to handle a refetch process without needing to elevate state or do any kind of hacky stuff with use effect. Let's also talk about this mark complete and this delete button, right? We're going to do the exact same things there. So if you go look at this to do card, you can see I've also got use mutation and use query client from Tanstack. And within this card, you know, we're just sending in some of the props we're sending in like title, but we've got a button that on click does this update status function. We got another button that on click does this delete to do function. And you can see we're passing in is, is loading. Um, I should also pass in disabled is loading status loading. And then we'll do the same thing down here. All right. What do these things do for us? Well, let's look at the loading, the, the status update ones first, right? So here we have this thing called use mutation, which is another hook. And we're going to pass in some stuff into an object, right, in this function. Our mutation function first, we have an asynchronous function call where we await axios.posts and we're calling out to an API endpoint and we're passing back some data. That backend is going to do whatever it does with it. And then again, we have, do we receive a success notification back from our backend? If so, hit this toast notification, send a little message to our user that something great happened. Awesome. And then again, query client dot invalidate queries. Hey, Tanstack, that data that we had stored in user to do's isn't valid anymore. Go refetch that data. If we have an error, do something different, right? Same thing on the delete. We're doing the exact same thing. We have this use mutation where we destructure mutate which we're calling delete to do we destructure is loading we're calling delete loading because we can't have multiple instances of is loading our mutation function an asynchronous call to axios.post we go to the back end to delete send some data on success give a toast notification invalidate that query tell our tan stack to refetch our component to refetch again if there's an error we have an error here so I hope this gives you a good understanding of why Tanstack query is so useful in making much cleaner code. You can make components that handle their own processes and don't worry about anything else cross communicating. You don't have to worry about elevating state. You don't have to worry about solving those weird cases where you need to figure out where state should live or make those hacky implementations to tell your use effect to rerun itself. It's a much cleaner process. It's a much easier to understand process. 
and you can make really, really concise components that just handle the processes they're supposed to handle and make sure that your front end has the appropriate and updated state. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful.